What's up, everyone? How you guys and gals doing? Welcome to the show. This segment is Biker News, baby. Later on, we got China Dow coming in, and we're going to be talking about why women feel so good when they're cheating. Yes, it's going to be something, but to start this one out, I wanted to say a couple things. The news media down in Albuquerque ran a video story about the violent history of the banditos and the banditos have been getting hit really hard in the media over this stuff in uh red river and i'm finding it not fair i really ain't they're not going out there and saying the good that that club has done especially omen he was one of the uh, guys killed at this event. Omen had family. He had kids. And I know he did a lot of work for the community. And that's not coming out in this because it ain't sensational. It really isn't. We all were focusing on the bad. Now, yes, we did have the president, Shady, on the show with that exclusive and talked about his side of the story. That's only one side, people. There is two sides. Two parties were involved in this. And everybody knows the one party will not talk to the media, so they won't be able to get their side of the story out. But I do know, because I was contacted by somebody, and I'm not going to say who, that the women that called in scared. You have nothing to worry about. I was guaranteed that. You have nothing to worry about. And that's what I was saying on the show. One percenters don't go after family. They don't go after kids. That's just not how it works. But I wanted to make sure I assured them that nothing will happen according to this source. And that's believable right there because no club does that. But the banditos are getting ran over right now in the media. You have this segment that was just run out of New Mexico that I want to show you. That way you can get an idea of what they're facing. We don't know the conversation that was had that set all this off. So please remember that. Please remember that. And you got to remember a lot the guys that did die, they have families too. I'll be right back. Uh, we'll talk about this. It was the notorious biker gang, the Banditos, were at the center of the shootout this weekend in this small northern New Mexico town of Red River. Three people died, two of them Banditos, the other one a member of the Water Dogs. Felice Romero joins us now in studio with a closer look at the Banditos. And Felice, they're no stranger to violence and not strangers to New Mexico. Yeah, Ryan, the Banditos have a presence in New Mexico for years, but were founded in Texas in the 60s. This shooting is just another one on the long list of shootouts that have made national headlines. Members of the Banditos biker gang came in droves to the 41st annual Red River Memorial Day motorcycle rally. But it wasn't long before things took a turn for the worse Saturday afternoon. Prior to this incident happening on Friday, uh, we had gotten some information from Texas DPS uh, who had been following approximately four or 500 banditos from Texas to the New Mexico state line knowing that they were headed here. A deadly shootout between the banditos and the water dogs closed down the small town of Red River. All eight individuals have been identified as outlaw motorcycle gang members. Uh, the banditos and the second one is a group called the water dogs. 
This isn't the first time the notorious biker gang has been part of a deadly shooting. Back in April of 2006, eight people were found dead with gunshot wounds inside cars on a farm in Toronto. Canadian police later arrested five people on murder charges. They say all of them were connected to the banditos. Almost 10 years later, in May of 2015, a shootout between the banditos and the Cossacks at a Twin Peaks in Waco, Texas, left nine people dead and 18 injured. By 2015, the FBI, DEA and Texas Department of Safety were already investigating the rivalry between the banditos and Cossacks. A year later, the federal government accused them of coordinating attacks on rival gangs and indicted them on racketeering charges. New Mexico has also prosecuted several cases against people affiliated with the banditos. In 2017, the FBI busted banditos members for drug trafficking. And just this past February, one member was arrested for murder that took place in Rio Rancho back in 2020. We'll see where this one goes. There you go. That really is what the banditos are facing in the media right now and are the the club having to be quiet and just let this happen that's why i wish uh, we'd be able to get a statement from the club that way we can put it out there for them to try to combat some of this coverage now i know a lot of people heard that they were shooting at the ambulance that didn't happen that's something that he said he heard on a radio or whatever the hell it is that he heard it on. If somebody would have shot at that ambulance, you can guarantee it would be all over the news right now because they would have used that as a domestic terrorist type of argument. So I don't buy that. Not whatsoever. Did they follow the ambulance? Who knows? We weren't there, and if they said it did, that's their side of the story. One thing I do want to talk about here is this Christian club. And I'm going to say suppose Christian club. Because a lot of people are hot and bothered that somebody might be giving it to a Christian club. And I want to put out there that a lot of these so-called Christian clubs, they hide behind the cross. They want to call themselves Christian clubs, but they act totally different. So you have to ask yourself why a lot of these Christian clubs that are wearing three-piece rockers, an MC, acting other than Christian. I do. I'd really want an answer to that question. Is it a way to skirt the tradition? I don't know. But it's a good question to bring up. And finally, i like to address the, uh, the big elephant in the room here. Myself and Marco run a new show. We are here to give you the news as it comes in as people are relaying it to us and there was a big question that was asked and see you do have to start distinguish distinguishing us from the news show from what happens in the biker scene as far as protocol we uh i personally asked them okay who shot first because everybody wanted to know now it's not our job to go out there and say, oh, don't answer that. It's not our job to do that. We're the reporters on this end. We're asking questions. We don't work for anybody. We do not have any skin in the uh, game other than getting you that information because it's one of the biggest stories in the world right now regarding the biker scene. Because you, you, you see some of the comments, it's like, really? See, I know you get attached to thinking that we're supposed to follow some code, but this is a news business. So we're going to ask the tough questions. We're not there to protect anybody. We're not there to cover for anybody. We're there to get you the information. 
And that was unfortunately one of the biggest questions everybody wanted to know. So I'm just saying uh, that off the top of my mind. But I do want you guys to remember, when you see a Christian club, I'm not talking CMA or One Piece. The ones you really look at and say, are you really a Christian club? Because you sure to hell ain't acting like one. You're not acting like you are following the old man upstairs. It seems like you're hiding behind it to get away with protocol. Now, do I agree protocol and traditions are pretty much dead? Yeah, because you have so many damn pop-up clubs that all these majors, they're not going to be able to police them. And there are people that are going to fight back now. And I think that's something that they should keep in mind. But before you start making judgments on the banditos and their part in this incident, get both sides. And that's what I said on the show. This is only one part of the story. Anyway, we're going to go over and uh, talk with Shine It Out right now. Got a good show coming up for you. It's going to be a good one. We'll be right back. Join the Insane Toronto Members Only Club on YouTube or Spotify and receive exclusive content Monday through Friday at 9.20 a.m. Central Standard Time. Your membership in the Toronto Club helps keep the show going strong. The Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Show now streaming over on Rumble and YouTube Monday. Monday through Friday at 8.15 a.m. Central Standard Time. Tune in Mondays live at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on YouTube for the Madhouse Monday Night Raw with Hollywood and Marco. Grab a beer or some wacky tobacco and sit back and bust the gut. 